So in this video, we're going to be looking at buffers in the blood. Now, human blood has a pH between 7.35 to 7.45 itself. And any pH change that actually falls outside that range can actually be fatal for the human body. Now, the carbonic acid hydrogen carbonate buffer is what controls the pH of blood. That's going to be our buffer within blood itself. And we've got carbonic acid, right, which looks like this. That's going to be our weak acid. And that's going to dissociate to form protons, H+, and then hydrogen carbonate ions as well, our conjugate base. Now, in terms of our buffer equation, right, this itself is going to be our buffer equation. And an extra process that you need to be aware of, right, for application questions is that carbonic acid is actually removed from the blood through producing carbon dioxide gas and then water as well, right? We need to be aware of that. So, yeah, we also need to be able to explain how buffers actually work. So, again, we've got our buffer equation over here. And let's say if we were to add some acid to our buffer, let's say if we were to deal with H, and we add some H added to our buffer solution which is going to be blood in this case what would actually happen is is that h plus would react with the conjugate base which is going to be hydrogen carbonate shift the equilibrium to the left and so we end up making more carbonic acid more carbon dioxide is breathed out and so any change in ph has actually been minimized in this process as well what about if we were to deal with adding extra alkali to our buffer right our alkali contains oh minus ions and that oh minus ion is going to react with our carbonic acid over here and so what that does is it shifts the equilibrium to the right we end up making more h plus and hydrogen carbonate and so overall we actually breathe less co2 out and we breathe more co2 in and what we can say again is that any change in ph has actually been minimized as well so yeah moving on right we can actually be asked to calculate the ratio of our hydrogen carbonate to carbonic acid or our carbonic acid to hydrogen carbonate itself as well now i've got an example over here where we're asked to calculate the ratio of hydrogen carbonate to carbonic acid in blood with the ph of 6.8 and we're given here a value for ka as well which is 4.17 times 10 to the power of minus 7 as well now let's say if you were to form an expression for ka right we end up with the following where we look at the concentration of h plus times by the concentration of hydrogen carbonate ions itself divided by the concentration of carbonic acid i end up with something that looks like the following and so right what i can do is i can rearrange this so that i can get the ratio of my hydrogen carbonate ions which should look something like this And that's going to be equal to, right, my Ka value divided by the concentration of H plus itself. Now, in this case, I don't actually have a value for H plus, but I can actually calculate that from my pH over here. So the concentration of H plus is going to be equal to 10 to the minus pH, which in this case is going to be 10 to the power of minus 6.8. I put that in my calculator and I end up with the value that is going to be 1.58 times 10 to the power of minus 7. And that's going to be in mole per decimeter cubed as well. So there's my concentration of H+. Plus. And so I can plug these values in. One divided by another. And what I end up with is a value that is going to be 2.63. Right, and then we're going to say it's a ratio where our acid is going to be one so for every one lot of carbonic acid right we have 2.3 lots of our hydrogen carbonate ions itself we can express that as a fraction as well and so what we end up with is the following but let's say if we were asked not for the ratio of hydrogen carbonate to carbonic acid in blood but instead the other way around the ratio of carbonic acid to hydrogen carbonate in blood instead we would end up with the following expression over here which we can rearrange again to get this time the concentration of h plus divided by the ka value itself so that ends up being right 1.58 times 10 to the power of minus 7 divided by right 4.17 times 10 to the power of minus 7 i put that in my calculator and i end up with a value of 0 0.379 and then that's going to be to one itself so what we're saying is for every one lot of hydrogen carbonate ion we actually have we have 0 0.379 lots of carbonic acid and again we can express that as a fraction where i've got 0 0.379 over one itself as well so you're looking at this question then, right? What makes it particularly challenging is that we don't actually have a value for Ka and we need to be able to calculate that using the information given and then use it in the actual patient's blood itself. So yeah, we're told blood at pH 7.4 has a hydrogen carbonate to carbonic acid ratio of 10.5 to 1 and the patient is admitted to hospital with a hydrogen carbonate carbonic acid ratio of 7.5 to 1 itself. We're asked to calculate the pH in her blood and to do that, right, what we need to be able to think about is... 
first of all calculating the value for k a using this value over here and this value over here as well so let's say if we were to look at right first of all at ph being equal to 7.4 we know the concentration of h plus is going to be equal to 10 to the power of minus that which is going to be equal to 3.98 times 10 to the power of minus 8 and that's going to be in mole per decimeter cubed itself now let's say if i were to calculate a value for k a itself i know i need to take the concentration of h plus that i've just calculated over here times by the concentration of our hydrogen carbonate ions itself and then i'm going to divide all of that by the concentration of our carbonic acid so in that case i end up with something that looks like this and i sub in my numbers i end up with 3.98 times 10 to the power of minus 8 and that's going to be times by the concentration of our hydrogen carbonate which is going to be 10.5 in this case right because remember our ratio is going to be 10.5 and then to 1 and then that's going to be divided by 1 and so what i end up with now is a value that is going to be 4.18 times 10 to the power of minus 7 and that's going to be our value for k itself now i can use this value of k over here right to find the concentration of h plus within hair blood and then calculate the ph as well and so what we can say is that at a new ph right what we can actually calculate is a value for the concentration of h plus right so i can go ahead and rearrange this equation above over here right to give me a new equation which is going to look like this where i've got ka times by the concentration of carbonic acid and that's going to be divided by the concentration of our conjugate base which is going to be our hydrogen carbonate ions itself i sub in my numbers i end up with 4.18 and that's going to be times by 10 to the power of minus 7 and that's going to be times by 1 itself over here right so i'm going to times that by 1 and i'm going to divide by 7.5 and so what i end up with now is a value of 5.57 times 10 to the power of minus 8 and that's going to be in mole per decimeter cubed and then if i were to calculate the ph of her blood right what i would actually end up with is minus log of that and so that's going to be Seven point two five in itself, right, and that is how we can do a very hard blood buffers calculation.